Hey y'all, welcome back to Experiencing the City with Michael McKee, where I'm on a mission to document the sights, sounds, tastes, views, and smells of cities, countries, and natural wonders around the world. Today, I'm in Venice, Italy, for 24 hours and on a budget. I'm excited to bring you along. So let's go check it out. Venice is a name that has found itself a home all over the world. Eleven of them can be found in North America alone. There's only one Venice, however, with the legacy, culture, cuisine, and absolute beauty to inspire cities around the world to adopt its name. And it's not Venice Beach in Los Angeles. Venice, Italy is perhaps one of the most unique and historically preserved cities I've ever had the privilege to visit. As you may know already, the historic city center of Venice is a series of islands located in a lagoon off the Adriatic Sea, connected to mainland Venice only by train or boat, and connected to each other by hundreds of tight, winding canals. Video alone can't capture what it feels like to navigate these weathered canals. It can't fill your nostrils with the scents that create the Venice experience or the sounds that create an ambience that is unique to this part of the world. That's why today, my mission is to immerse you into the Venetian experience by bringing all five senses of my 24-hour journey to this world-famous patchwork of rustic canals and waterlogged piazzas to you. So, let's dive in together. In January, the sun rises in Venice at nearly 8 o'clock, so leaving the flat any earlier than that will give you a beautiful, quiet, twilight perspective of the otherwise vibrant and bustling city. This is just what I wanted, and just what I did. Oh, it's a peaceful and really chilly morning here in Venice, Italy. <laughs> the air smells musty and a little bit salty. Um, of course, that's because the ocean is right there. Uh, you can hear the sounds of seabirds, pelicans, seagulls, you name it, as well as boat motors and engines kind of cascading through the ocean water. Uh, and the soft clapping of the waves as well. At least at this time in the morning, it's early peaceful atmosphere. To bring yourself imaginatively into the early morning Venetian streets, imagine scents of musty, salty air blended with the contained fishiness of the canals. The sounds of seagulls crying into the clapping lagoon waves will break through the chilly sea breeze, and motorboats trudging through the cloudy aquamarine water remind you that while all seems calm, the city is waking up. As you look up and around you through the canals and streets, facades of pink, orange, beige, and white greet you. Some weathered away to expose the brick or stone beneath, many with balconies adorned in greenery or laundry hung out to dry. Venetian architecture rests heavily in the Gothic and Renaissance realms, with decorative archways in a serpentine shape, these are called OG arches, and intricately detailed stonework alongside a style called Rococo which involves often over-the-top ornamentals. There are no modern 20th or 21st century buildings on the historic center islands. None. Everything, from the buildings to the bridges to the tiled piazzas, is weathered, aged, and waterlogged, with the exception of the magnificent domed cathedrals. Venice is beautiful and serene in the morning, do not get me wrong. However, to fully appreciate the atmosphere and ambience, coffee and breakfast, at least for me, was a necessity. Fortunately, cafes abound in Venice, and Italy in general, and I stumbled across Rosa Salva amidst the maze of alleyways. I'm quite glad I did, because this famed patisserie served up a deliciously thick and sweet cream-filled croissant, along with an excellently strong Italian espresso. Something I observed while people watching in the confectionery-covered cafe is that espresso culture is particularly strong here. And what this means is that you grab an espresso and you sip it at the counter while chatting with the barista or whoever happens to be standing next to you. Instead of a metro or tram system that you typically find in a major city, Venice's unique geography requires a different approach. The water bus does take you around the city, but I found that at 9 euros and 50 cents a ticket, it's a city better explored on foot. If, like me, you find yourself in Venice, Italy in the month of January, be sure to pack in multiple, multiple layers. 
In the morning, it's absolutely frigid, just a heads up. But by the afternoon, you're into the 50s. As the city awakens, crowds begin to fill the streets, bridges, canals, and piazzas. Walking through Venice, you'll find yourself in a lot of tight, really cramped alleyways. But at the end of the day, they all open up into these huge plazas such as this one. It's a pretty remarkable juxtaposition. And of course, the canals. The fishy, wet stone scented alleyways begin to fill with the smells of freshly baked bread, sweet pastries, and homemade pasta. If, like me, you ever find yourself exploring Venice on a rather tight budget, people watching on one of the many bridges overlooking the Grand Canal is a great option. From the bridges, you can listen in complete incoherence as dozens of languages fill the air around you as you gaze over the boats, ferries, and gondolas ripping through the wide waterway. The breezy, salty, and musty air drifting past the weathered plaster and brick building facades lined with balconies adorned in colorful planters really solidifies your sense of place. It's a great way to soak in the ambience of the city. And hey, it's free. Exploring Venice aimlessly throughout the morning truly felt like being whisked into another world. After all of the people watching and walking, however, and by this point in the day, I had already walked five miles. It was lunchtime. Snack-sized sandwiches called tremeziti are a Venetian delicacy and special. And that's what I'm on a mission to find. Bar alla Toletta is known to tourists and locals alike as one of the best spots to grab a Venetian staple called tremezzini. These snack-sized sandwiches are filled with an assortment of delicious spreads. The ones I tried ranged from quite traditional to a bit niche. The rustico involves prosciutto, salsa picante, mayo, and rocola. The prosciutto involves prosciutto, mozzarella, and mayonnaise, and the tulno is tuna, tomato, and mayonnaise. The flavors are rich and pop with each chew, which is something I found to be consistent with all of the Italian cuisine I've tried. Exploring Venice during midday on a Tuesday is interesting because it really provides a perspective of how casually tourists and locals seem to blend here. You can spot the tourists, thanks to the suitcases and the selfie sticks, of course, but the city seems to operate very well with them. Although many sources indicate that the city is having a challenging time maintaining its infrastructure and historic preservation with such an influx of visitors in recent decades. That said, Venice is still clearly a city that operates as a city and home first, and a tourist destination second. Around 55,000 people live on the islands of Venice's historic city center. There are schools, teenagers skateboarding in the plazas, university students studying from the local cafes, frequented water bus routes, boutique shops, and full-size grocery stores amidst the sea of attractions. Local Venetian culture is alive and well, and to indulge in this fully, dessert is required. There are too many Venetian dessert creations to count, and certainly too many to try in one day, but back at Rosa Salva, the baker informed me that zaletti was about as Venetian as it gets. Zaletti is a dense shortbread that seemed to have raisins baked inside and is covered in powdered sugar. At least at Rosa Salva, the cookies are large and long, and I ate two alongside an Americano. The dense shortbreads were delicious, but it's safe to say that by this point in the day, despite the many miles I wrapped up already, I was absolutely stuffed. Above the roofline of Terracotta, Venice's lagoon islands are dotted with the aged bronze stones of magnificent basilicas dating back hundreds and hundreds of years. On the hour, every hour, the city's canals, alleyways, and piazzas echo with the chimes of the many bell towers. Piazza San Marco is the central square and heartbeat of Venice, Italy, headed by the breathtakingly ornate, detailed, and colorful St. Mark's Basilica. And that's where I'll be heading next. A landmark of Venice, the Basilica is stunning, with colorful religious Renaissance murals adorning the artfully crafted arches and marble columns. The name of the Basilica is just as impressive as the exterior. The domes and the high arches are literally tiled in golden mosaics, embedded with magnificent depictions of Christian art, a space meant to be worthy of reverence and an inspiration to heavenly praise. As you imagine yourself inside the basilica's walls, imagine the chilly air filled with an incredibly musty scent. My guess for the reason the entire city smells like this is that it's practically submerged in water. Climate change will definitely be a big threat for Venice. 
there's maybe two feet between the sea and the ground. Across the entryway to Piazza San Marco is St. Mark's Bell Tower. 10 euros get you to the top of the St. Mark's Bell Tower, and it is absolutely worth it. The Adriatic Sea, in a sea foam green, surrounds Venice's ancient terracotta roofline, punctured by bell towers and bronze basilica domes. Those Alps. Those Alps are over there. That's, uh, that's Austria. Across many bridges and through the maze of Venice's alleyways and canals sits Basilica Santa Maria, one of the largest churches in Venice. Quieter and far less crowded than St. Mark's, Santa Maria is just as stunning and demanding of reverence. A large, open rotunda sits beneath the towering dome and is left empty while the dome is under restoration. The interior of the basilica is dark, and the ominous sensation it creates as the sunbeams peer through the high windows into the musty air is rather somber. In exquisite condition, however, the sanctuary smells of clean marble and polished wood. As the sun begins to set in Venice, a new layer of life emerges. String lights illuminate the alleyways. The soft sunset creates a golden glow on the rustic yellow, white, pink, and orange buildings, and gondolas fill the canals. In addition to the sounds of trotting tourists and clapping waves from the sea in the canals, You'll hear modern dance club tunes bumping from the shops and nightclubs, juxtaposed with street musicians strumming classic Italian chords on the guitar. At 11 miles walked, this point in my day sent me and my stomach in one direction, dinner. And fortunately, I knew just what I was after. Bigoli and salsa. It's a famous Venetian dish that involves bigoli pasta and sardines. The sardine part I'm a bit iffy about, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And that's what I'm on the search for right now. I stumbled upon Osteria al Portego, deep into the mixed mashed patchwork that is Venice, and I'm so glad I did. In the style of a traditional taverna, al Portego serves up Italian pub fare relatively cheaply. Bigoli and salsa was only 14 euros. The bigoli noodles were thick cut and dense, and the hot sardine spread on top was thick, chunky, and very fishy. Wandering about Venice at night is a festive ordeal. Thousands of people fill the alleyways and piazzas, out to dinner, enjoying aperitifs, drinks, and breaking the bank in some of Italy's finest branded storefronts. However, not every alleyway is filled to the brim, and there are areas in Venice, particularly when the canals are calm and the streets are empty, they can feel like a Broadway stage or a Hollywood movie set. So there we have it, a full day in Venice, Italy. A disclaimer I usually include is that as with most of the world's cities, the true ambience created by the sights, sounds, tastes, feels, and smells of Venice can't be captured in just one visit. This small city really packs in a lot of weight, and I could have spent weeks more in the historic maze of aqua canals, weathered basilicas, unique shops, delicious cafes and osterias, museums, and so much more. For many, Venice is a huge tourist destination, but something I've observed walking around the city today, wandering through the canals and the shops and the stores, is that this is also home for thousands of people. And there's just something so peaceful and relaxing and simple about life on this little island. While it could be said that for every one tourist, there are two more tourists in Venice, this is a beautiful city that so many people call. I hope that today's vlog was able to give you a sense of the sights, sounds, feels, and tastes, and smells that comprise the experience of this amazing Adriatic Sea Island in Italy. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.